Howdy folks, this is the Indiana Kid again, and it has been quite a while. Um, I first off want to say uh, thank you everyone for subscribing and for viewing my videos. Uh, I did not think it would be, uh, or my channel would be near as successful as it has been. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for that and, uh, and for uh, enjoying the videos that I'm putting up or that I have been putting up in the past. Obviously I haven't been uh, putting any up lately. That is because I do not have any black powder pistols anymore. Um, that is due to a project that I was funding um, a couple months ago now and that is a Smith & Wesson 686 357 revolver. Um, I got this, I kind of wanted a gun, a little bit more modern gun that I could carry and um, uh, just kind of be, like I said, more of a modern gun um, instead of black powder that I could uh, use for self-defense and other things like that. Not that you couldn't for black powder, um, but yeah, just kind of a more modern gun is something that I can always fall back on. And uh, so that's kind of the result of why I haven't been posting any videos. I just don't have any black powder pistols. So, um, everybody's been asking for more videos, and what I might do is I have um, a friend who has some black powders, and I might borrow one from him and just do some tricks and whatever, post some more videos, um, just to have them coming. Um, so since I don't have any more guns uh, at this moment, hopefully I will in the near future, um, we're going to do a video on the holsters, the different holsters that I've worn in my videos. And, uh, uh, so, yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully, uh, this won't be more than a one-part video, but my video camera is kind of in, uh, weird lately. And, um, so if it cuts out on me, I might have to make it a, a one- or two-part video, or a two- or three-part video, rather. Um, but hopefully not. Hopefully it'll stay on for me. So, uh, with that, we'll get right into it. The uh, first holster kind of design that I came up with for the black powder, first off, um, any holster that you are going to look into getting is 90% of the time, especially for revolvers in general, single action or black powder revolvers, um, it's not going to fit the gun. If you just go get like a Slim Jim holster or a double loop Mexican holster, from like Cabela's or something for your single action 45 or your uh, black powder revolver. 90% of the time it will not fit, especially after you're wearing it all over the place and the leather gets broken and the gun is wearing the holster with your draws and reholstering. Um, over time the gun will naturally sink into the holster um, until it can't go down anymore. and the way holsters are just mass produced these days, uh, they don't really take the time unless you pay for it custom and get a holster where the gun will slide in and it doesn't fall down after you draw it in and out and are breaking the leather in. Um, so what I did, and uh, I, obviously I don't have any black powders to kind of show you how, the wor how it works, but um, what I did is um, I bought a holster. This is actually, I'll take this off for you. I got this um, holster and belt from Cabela's. Um, super cheap. Uh, it's economical. This is, this is probably the best holster belt rig setup that you could get for a black powder pistol for the money and um, for the quality, for sure. This belt and pistol which I've worn, I can't even tell you how many times, daily when I had my, uh, when I had my black powder pistol. And uh, all over the place, riding, uh, riding my horses. Um, I mean, I did everything with this holster on and off, and if you just keep it oiled, uh, it will, this is very thick quality leather. Um, Cabela's does a good job with the making the holsters. However, like I said, uh, your gun is naturally going to slide into the holster. This holster uh, is probably the best one. I usually wear this on my strong side uh, for a nice quick draw holster. 
and obviously you can see it's kind of rough cutting um, but this holster used to be much wider probably probably about that wide um, it used to be wider all down this side that I uh, shaved the leather off um, this front right here all that front used to be about this tall and uh, basically what was happening is like I said the gun was sliding down and the next thing you know um, also with this I'll explain this little string here later also this side siding right here um, went up to about here about an inch taller and so the whole thing was just much wider so as you can see the uh, black powder especially like an 1851 or 1860 something that doesn't have a top frame um, is uh, is going to slide down um, a lot when you are uh, when you get a brand new holster and uh, it starts breaking in. Um, so what I did is I trimmed down the sides and um, I cut uh, cut this front starting here and then uh, went a little high like that just to kind of protect the cylinder um, and then stopped here. However, the trick um, with this is obviously it went higher and in order to cut it without having to redo all the all the lacing is um, I cut the string up where it started and then unlaced it all the way down to where I wanted the uh, uh, wanted to make the cut so I unlaced it all the way down to here and then I went ahead and cut it down and then cut it over and then I just tied the knot and then uh, just let this kind of fray out like that. I think it kind of looks cool. Um, so now th it's a really nice, um, uh, really quick, uh, quick draw holster, and um, the the uh, cylinder sits about here. The hammer is easily accessed. The trigger guard sits right on top of here, and um, you can really get a seven and a half inch, eight inch barrel out of here really quick. Um, in fact, uh, that reminds me of another video that I recently dug out, I don't know why I haven't posted it, um, of a uh, quick draw, just like a 20-30 second video of a quick draw that I did with the 1858 Remington um, that hopefully I'll remember to post up for you guys. And um, so that's the holster. This is, again, from Cabela's and, um, and with this tie-down string right here. Just... Uh, punch a hole and uh, you can tie it off however you want and uh, that definitely is a necessity especially for a quick draw um, and uh, yeah again from Cabela's and this holster very economically priced at 18 20 bucks might might be about 20 bucks now uh, I got this about two years ago or so um, and this circle kind of like worn out leather here you can probably see is for a concho um, that I haven't uh, put on yet. Kind of like these conchos that I have on this newer belt and holster that I uh, recently kind of made. Um, I'm, uh, hopefully in the future I can get around to uh, ordering some more conchos. Um, I want to put one here and uh, on the front of that holster piece and then here and then just kind of all around the belt kind of like I did on this one. I think that kind of makes it, or gives it a cool look. Um, so the trick, um, again, with this rig being a great uh, quick draw holster, um, is uh, the uh, awesome thing about this holster is it unsnaps, this piece unsnaps from the back. It's got two snaps there, and uh, then it's just an open flap like that. And what I went ahead and did with this belt, again, got this belt at Cabela's, awesome, great thick belt, uh, I believe it's called the Civil War belt, and it comes in black or brown, um, great thick quality leather, and uh, I bought this same time around I did with the holster, and I've worn it with this holster, and it's still in great top of the line shape, nice broken leather. Um, so what I did with this uh, belt, is I went ahead and cut a slit on the side um, of this belt right where I kind of just made a mark right on the strong side where I wanted it and uh, it obviously doesn't have to be perfect because you can just move the belt uh, where you want it 
Um, so I went ahead and cut a slit like that, and this twine um, I just weaved in and out through the slit um, because over time when I made this slit with this holster, I kind of made some more adjustments with the holster and made it a little bit more skinnier. Um, so I didn't want it sliding back and forth in that uh, slit there. And um, so now I just kind of weave some uh, twine or some uh, leather lacing through there. So now when I feed it through, it's nice and snug and it doesn't move anywhere. Um, and especially the main purpose for this holster, again, it's a great quick draw holster, um, but mainly uh, you can have it, you can feed it through the, uh, the belt. And uh, once you tie it down with a, a tie down on your leg, I mean, this holster stays right in place. I mean, you can run around, uh, ride, and uh, it does not does not move. Every time you reach down, it's, your pistol is going to be in the same place. Um, so once you make that slit there on the side of your belt, uh, pretty simple. Obviously, feed it through, feed the holster through, just like that. And then you take your snaps, snap that side, and the other side, just like that. And it kind of acts as a swivel, sort of, so when you're wearing it, um, yeah, like I said, it does not move anywhere. You can take it on and off, and the holster is not going to slide around in your belt or anything, get annoying. Um, that is, right here is definitely, like I said, probably the best um, I'd recommend to anybody who's uh, just getting into black powder shooting or if not, um, has just been looking for a holster, good quality, but yet doesn't want to get something custom there that you're going to have to spend 150 bucks just for a rig. Uh, these things two together, maybe 40 bucks, 45 bucks with shipping, and uh, it is definitely probably the best option to go with and like I said this leather is great quality will easily last two lifetimes um, so yeah great first rig if not something uh, to keep around for quick draw or like uh, making videos what I um, usually just keep it around for and uh, yeah probably the best option